Hi. Hello. Hi, and how are you doing? E good evening to everyone. I am very excited to be here amongst so many amazing people and having this chat with Chetan finally. No, no, I'm, I'm delighted too. And I've always seen you from the very beginning. I never knew one day we'll be doing this session, but uh, from your first movie or whether it was a Netflix thing, I, I found this, you are extraordinarily talented. So congratulations on all the achievements. How, do you, how are you keeping it together? Like, does it go to your head? Do you feel like, kabhi kabhi lagta hai, apun ko apuni bhagwan hai? Yeah, you feel like, how do you, how do you keep grounded, you know? When so much fame is coming, so much adulation, so much love. I think I have an attitude of gratitude. And sometimes my mom tells me, she says, you just don't know how to take a compliment. You're always underplaying yourself. But that comes from, um, the very beginning of my journey. When I started off, I didn't go on to become an overnight success story. So those few years, the initial years of, of my career were the most defining years, and I, I believe that's what's made me who I am today. I think that's given me a sense of grounding that I don't let it get to my head. I, neither the success nor the failures. Okay. I think I found how to balance it, and what to take from it, and move ahead. I'm, I'm, I feel I'm a student of life. So I'm always learning, you know, this is going to be a learning for me when I go back. I'm sure I'm going to take a lot from this experience. And that's, what, that's how this journey has been so far for me. It's yeah. going to be my 10th year in this industry this year. So I think, um, wow. ten, so e yeah. Even the so-called overnight success is 10 year of nights and day of work, yeah? Uh, in fact, one question I want to ask you, Kiara. A lot of times, this is said right from Indra Nui to any, any of the leading women say, like, I think she controversially said this once, that women can't have it all. And the biggest question is, can women have it all? Um, you seem to be having it all. Uh, you, you just had a beautiful wedding last year, one year now. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and you recently celebrated your wedding anniversary. You've had success after success in films. You look good. You're fit. You have adulation. I haven't really seen people having a Kiara Advani hate club. You know, some of us have those. But you are loved universally. How is it happening? Because, and it's, I, I think it's not just can women have it all. Can anyone have it all? Because even men find it difficult to have it all. Are you having it all? I think the grass is always greener on the other side. Oh. That's what we, I think that's just how it is in life. What someone may feel like, oh, she has it all. I may not feel that way. I may feel like, oh my God, he has it all, or she has it all, or look, Chetan Bhagat has it all. You know, that's how, that's how it is. We always think the other person is, is you know, the, like I said, the grass is always greener on the other side. But I think um, what you see is a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work, a lot of, um, you know, there are days when, when you feel, how am I going to do it? But it's, it's how you come back and how you, um, you know, you strive to, to, to overcome those phases of, of lows or, or not being able to, to find your balance in those moments. Um, and everything else that you're saying, I mean, like you're saying, that whether it's your personal life aspect or professional life, I mean, I feel life is a constant work in progress. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not easy. It's not like you just it's not wake like you up and it's it. all of... Like you made it. Abhi ho gaya. I don't feel so. I feel like I have a long way to go. Abhi sir, dus saal hue, abhi to God willing, many, many more years. Um, so no, I don't feel like I have it all. Yeah, I guess when they say... I am grateful having okay. said that. For no. everything that has, um, that I've been blessed with. The career, the people in my life, everything. But, but I still feel this have it all concept, it's not in my head. Uh, Broadly, when they say, can a woman have it all, they mean, she can, can she have a career as well as be, have a great family life or whatever the way she wants? Do you think, broadly, not just for you, yeah. do you think that's possible? If you want to make that happen, you can. I think it's mind over matter. And the example you took, Indra Nui, I think she's a great example of that herself. I mean, what she's achieved, being a mother, being a wife, being a home, you know, she's balanced. She yeah. set examples, she's done that, and many more women um, in my field, and many, I'm sure many of you sitting over here, um, it does take a lot of work, not to discard the fact that it also takes that much work from the men. I think the difference is that the women always get asked more often. Yeah. There's more expectation um, from the woman to be 
whether it's a homemaker or whether you know yeah, there's, exactly. there's, there no, are more ask pressures on her aapko ceo banna hai but bachcho ka kya hoga they right. don't ask a man that they'll never ask a man that yeah so it's good that we're having this conversation <laughs> next time you have a man sitting in front of you i'd love for you to ask him that question i will i will <laughs> i mean they they say that uh, another thing i read on the internet was between these five things wife career fitness not wife i mean relationship for you husband or whatever career fitness sleep and friends you can only have three things in life some other things have to be, what did you say like a relationship okay relationship family whatever career fitness sleep and friends it's hard to have be great at all five you'll probably good at three only so do you uh, my question simple is do you have enough sleep do you get to socialize do you, uh, i have to make time i have to prioritize what i need um and how much of me i mean i wish i could be everywhere i'm newly married so of course my parents keep wanting me to come home and i'm like i have another home to also run i have a career to also look after i have friends who also are demanding and say come on we haven't met in so long and i have parents who i love you know who are my world and who i keep wanting to meet um and i also have like you said whether it's fitness or health or or sleep these are things which i have to prioritize for myself as well but i think it's all about balance um and fortunately i'm surrounded by people who are very understanding of that so i think it's if if you put your mind to it you'll make it happen yeah speaking of understanding even the audience seems to be more understanding there was a time it was seen as a negative for your career if an actor got married but nowadays sometimes it's a boost to your career or whatever it it seems to have no difference do you think that's a change that has happened and of course is it a welcome change what are your thoughts on that so when i was getting married um before we publicly announced it there was a lot of you know chatter about oh my god why is she getting married now she's like you know there was a lot of she's just reaching that phase and all of that but uh, kudos to the audience because i think they have evolved we keep saying oh to the directors producers or to the actors or female actors who've taken on that but kudos to the audience because they see you as a character they don't see you as so and so who comes from this family or who come you know what i mean when they're watching you if they see everything else of your personal life then then as an actor we've we've not done our job i have to convince you that i am this character so whether i'm married whether i'm a mother whether i'm someone's daughter whatever that is that's immaterial in that moment and um, i think i can say that post marriage i've signed two of my biggest films so i don't think i think that's you know that's changing now and i think of course we have so many actresses i think all your top actresses today are all married so yeah. that speaks volumes in itself that you so know that's there's positive that's change. a positive change that's come about yeah no i'm glad it has come about how do you manage your social media you do it you have a team who does it because it's a that's a job like it really is a job i do it myself and this is the one job that i have to get better at yeah i was you don't have insta game your insta initially. game i have i don't think i have an insta game right now my fans are calling me advani because i've been posting a lot of my ads and i find that hilarious that is kind of funny but like it's by work <laughs> i'm proud to share it we work a lot on all the creatives of those ads as well uh but yeah i knew i know i have to get my insta game up uh but it's not someone i put i mean it's not something that i put so much thought into because mm. i'm also at the same time trying to stop being addicted to instagram i feel there's so much to achieve and there's so much to do and there's so much to read and there's so much to learn that sometimes instagram can become a little monotonous with the scrolling and you tend to get distracted so unfortunately while i'm trying in my personal life to not be so addicted i'm also losing my insta game a bit yeah no let's talk about this thing because i think it's important for the youth instagram is extremely popular yeah and but you as an achiever as somebody with ambition and a hard working person you do feel instagram can be a distraction or any social media for example could be x or it could be whatever facebook youtube all yeah i mean it depends what you're going there to i mean it can like we say it can be if you want to you know read about certain things there are beautiful pages which you know are are, are richer and all of that 
And then sometimes you want to just scroll and see fun gupshap or like fashion, all of that. But that can, that can be very time consuming. And also, what you see is the best version of it. Nobody mm. knows the hard work behind that. Even when we put up our pictures, like we were talking backstage, I mean, that one selfie that I've posted, there are 50 selfies in my, in my photo album. Uh, which you have that, rejected. Which didn't make it, which didn't make it. So I feel somewhere, you know, when, when young people are looking, they're always seeing the best version. And I feel that's what Instagram has become. There are few people now who are changing that and, you know, speaking about it or putting, um, or being, trying to be more authentic so that we change these standards and these high expectations or, you know, these unachievable beauty standards and things like that. But, um, but at the same time, there's a lot of work that goes behind the <laughs> way, whether it's how somebody looks. Like, very recently, I was seeing a post that Rithik Roshan posted on his training for fighter. And he posted his whole journey about how he, um, you know, gave up so many things to sleep on time, to, to mm. you know, get to his workout, to do his routine. And I, I understand that because that's the discipline it takes for all of us in this profession. It's not, it's not just like you wake, wake up like this and have hair and makeup and it's great. I think there's a lot of hard work and discipline that goes behind everything that you see because it's, it is a visual medium. So you do want to give it your best. You want to set aspirational standards, but without being, um, uh, you know, I mean, like, I think to do it in, in a healthy way, but without, without putting the pressure that this is how it's meant to be. But for yeah. us, if, if this is my job and I have to do a, a certain song or a film and look a certain way, I'll put in that discipline. I've done that. I know that's when you, when you ask me, how do we manage it all? It's tough. You've got to prioritize in those times. Yeah, no, actually, this is an important issue you took out of impossible beauty standards, yeah. impossible life standards. I open Instagram in the morning. I'm tired. I've not even brushed my teeth. I'm just like, my knees are hurting and I have to go to the gym somehow, whatever. And I'm seeing like, Every actor is in Maldives having breakfast in those floating things. And, and I'm like, what is this, yaar? I'm not having breakfast. Like, I, firstly, I think that breakfast is overrated. Because if the spoon falls in the it's water, and your fork falls, and then you're calling them, hi, housekeeper, can you give us a spoon? And, or like my croissant is floated into the Indian Ocean. Fine, but it looks really good. I want to get that breakfast one day and float and open and pick up my whatever, bread, slice. It looks like you guys live like that. Not you guys, but like the, the models. There are many people who seem to have such a fabulous life, Kiara. And then they look so beautiful and you're eating that big breakfast and you're still so fit and slim and everything. Somebody in some part of India is seeing it in Guwahati, Bhopal. You do, yeah, there are millions following. And some girl, may feel like, wow, I, I'm not good enough. Or a guy also may see a male fitness model. It could be for models, actors, whoever. I'm not good enough physically. I'm never going to have... And it can create a negative cycle. You know, like, then what's the point of me doing anything in life? I'm just not going to have this super fabulous life. What are your thoughts on the same? And what can some young person... like? I guess, like you said, how do they see this? What is this? Is, is Instagram real or is it not real? I mean, what's really going on with those breakfasts? Well, honestly, I like eating breakfast, like just normally <laughs> at home, in my PJs, <laughs> not getting into a fancy costume and going into a pool and getting that picture. I don't think anyone wants that. <laughs> what you see is obviously... And someone has taken that picture, right? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, so I'm like holding my avocado toast and... Maybe I should post my avocado toast, it'll be more relatable. <laughs> I'll take that pip from you so and yeah, do that. So yeah, how does one like cope with this, you know? We have a 13-year-old girl, 15-year-old girl looking at it growing up and thinking, wow, I have acne. And these are these perfect bodies, perfect lives, people. What do you want to say to them? These are very, very real things that you're talking about, which is why I said that I myself have stopped taking that pressure, because it's not, it's not just that 13-year-old girl. Of course, it's all of them. But trust me, it's everyone you're seeing on Instagram, they're all going through the same shit. Really? Sorry, pardon my language. Really? But everyone is going through this. Of course, it's all becoming like, 
you know, this, this whole culture of putting up these perfect pictures, um, I, I think, like, I'm bored of seeing that. If I see another picture like that, I'd want to unfollow the account because I feel there's just too much. I don't know, I find, like, imperfections or you want to see something more relatable. Yeah. Um, also, that's why I said I think you need to, in a day, the first thing you do in the morning cannot be waking up and going on social media. That's, I think, great. I feel give yourself that one hour. That's what I do. When I wake up, my first one hour, I, I try not even looking at my phone, even though I know I have to, like, attend to work calls, and that's probably the only reason why I would, because in my job, we don't have timings. But I still make that one hour for myself, whether I want to meditate, read a book, which I'm trying to do for very long, um, I, whether I want to you know, just have my breakfast, then go to the gym, do, like, have a routine, have a certain structure in your life, just for yourself. And I feel when you realize how much that will help you grow as a person, keep your, you know, what I noticed when, when I started doing this is that whether it's anxiety, fear, um, all these emotions, all these negative emotions, sometimes creep in the way even when you're just scrolling and you don't realize it. It's so subconscious. But if I had to remove that and my first one hour of my day was not, you know, it did not start like that, you just realize how much more enriched you are, how much more um, present you are, um, you know, and taking in this moment. And you're, I think it just lays that foundation for the rest of your day because you're not waste. Sometimes that one hour goes to like five hours if you're scrolling. I mean, see your screen time, and I'm sure all of us here would be embarrassed and like put our phone away. So that is something we need to work on, and I feel that's um, that's something that's helped me. Yeah. Uh, in terms of fitness, how much are you doing? Are you doing it every day? How much time in the gym? How many times a week? Rough guideline, or is there a rule like that for you? I go every single day. I take Sundays off, or once a week I go, I take an off. And um, I also love swimming. So I, I do a workout in the morning and then I swim in the afternoon or evening. And I just find this more than anything, just time for myself. I'll tell you something interesting that happened today. So I was working out today, um, and I wake up very early in the morning and run to the gym, sometimes what empty time? stomach. 7, 7.30, by 8 I like to be in the gym. So I worked out in the morning this morning, and I did a very heavy workout. I did strength training. I really pushed myself. And my trainer tells me, OK, we finished this with a two-minute sprint on the treadmill. So I was like, OK, two minutes, it's so easy. And he put it on a very high speed, and I started running. And one minute, 30 seconds down, I'm like, I cannot do this. I think I'm done. I've had a great workout. Let's end it. And he said, no, you will finish it. And I realized those last 30, sec uh, 30 seconds, that I ran, which I did not want to run, was actually my whole workout. Because the fact that I could push my mind to tell my body, you've got this and you can do this, was so fulfilling that it just made me feel I could do anything if I put my mind to it. And I feel like that's the whole game. Everything, you know, we often allow our mind to get the better of us and tell us what we can and cannot do. But if you have control, that's the only thing we need to have control on is our mind. You, I can't control you, I can't control your thoughts, I can't control anybody else, but I can control my own. And I feel like giving yourself that power to not get the better of you is half the battle won. And it was, I mean, I don't know, but for me, it, I cannot even explain to you the happiness and fulfillment I got of finishing that 30 second run. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you're not a motivation speaker. Because we would all have competition. You really put it really well. I think you'll be an amazing motivational speaker and in case you ever want to change. But what you say makes scientific sense. Actually now, uh, there is a saying, what gets stressed gets adapted. So whatever stress we face in life, uh, that's where the change is happening. Whether the last, if the, in the lows, last 30 seconds were really hard, that's where your body learns to cope with that much effort and performance extra. So in any case, whenever you're facing a very tough time, a tough, that's where the adaptation happened. Which brings me to this, now you're doing action films, man. I mean, there was this Kabir Singh girl, yeah. quiet in class, I remember, that was your introduction to the world of movies. Everybody remembers that scene. Quiet, demure, that was the character, not you. Um, and now you're gonna do action, like Dawn 3, you know, like beat up people and things like that. Yeah. How is that? Like, 
are you looking forward to that? Are you learning how to beat up people? Are you practicing <laughs> at home with some people? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have an action hero at home who's doing a great job, but um, I think this was a conscious decision. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to change it up for myself. And this was one genre I was longing to like get myself to do, change the vibe, change the way I've been perceived so far. Um, and that's what's exciting, right? As an actor, you, you're constantly stepping into different characters and making the world believe that this is who you are. So there will be a lot of prep for uh, the film, but uh, I've got time to do that. And um, I am, I'm very excited. I've, I've never done an action movie, so now's my time to do some action. I think you'll be amazing at it. I have to ask you one question about marriage in general, because you are, in Indian terms, you are newly married only. Abhi kita ek saal hua na? I know people who wear chuda for one year. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's up to you. You are newly married. But my most important question, gener general question is, now we live in a left swipe, right swipe time. Right? People are into like short term, situationships. I don't know, I go to Instagram and I'm trying to write books and every time there is a new term. That's all kind of things going on. At the same time, there is, there is a big longing for love. There is a big longing for finding the one. And settling. I, I do think it's still there, no matter which generation comes. Ultimately, everybody wants to have that one special person in their life. You took that step. You're saying, even when people were saying, Abhi, itti jal... How does one know he or she is the one? For me, he just felt like home. So I knew it. He just every time I was with him, I just felt like I was home. Okay. Um, and for me, that's saying a lot because I do come from a home which is again there's a lot of love, there's a lot of nurturing, there's a lot of pampering that happens there, um, all of us to each other. So to feel and I, it's such a fulfilling home that I come from that to feel the same thing with someone else, I just knew that this is it. This is and, who and I the want timing to spend of it. Life. Did you feel that you could just like? be dating for a while, longer, or like, what made you say, it's him and it's now? I don't know, I mean, I ne it never, I mean, he's there was cute. never a moment or a, you know, something specific that happened that made me think like that. It was very organic, it just happened. And I think the person I am, I like, I, li I believe I, I'm good at balancing my personal and professional life. And I'm, I'm very all heart, so if I, if I want to do something, I will go for it and then dekha jayega how I manage everything else. But there was, it was never, um, you know, I, I never thought about it like, oh my God, my career and this. I knew I would do it. I said, I'll do it all and yeah. hopefully and set an example myself. There is a leap of faith. There is a leap of faith. And even backstage, we're talking about leap of faith in the context of motivation and when someone is feeling low in life, some person watching this, some young boy or girl, maybe going through a phase in life where their career is not going as planned, their boyfriend dumped them, girlfriend dumped them, some personal tragedy happened. And you mentioned backstage about uh, keeping the faith. Yeah. Or just talk of that more. Well, I feel that is something, and I say this out of what's worked for me, and if I can share this with people, that in a world where there's so much fear, and we all have it, it's not that I don't, there are times of very often where I feel anxiety, stress, fear, all of these emotions. But that's when I remember, no, you just have to have faith and you have to keep going. And I say this because this is what worked for me when I just debuted and came into the industry, um, not knowing after my first film what's going to happen. I was like, I've entered this career and I've gotten into the movies, but now what? Back then, I, my, I always thought that you just had to get your first film or uske baad film to mil jayegi. But that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And that's not even the case after commercial successes. It, you know, it, it, there's a lot of hard work and effort. Um, with it, it's always film to film, Friday to Friday. That's how our business is. There's no um, guarantee or there's nothing permanent here. So back then when post my first film, even though everybody had um, uh, you know, a lot of the reviews had written, oh, she's a newcomer to watch out for, she's very competent, good reviews, but because we didn't have the commercial success, it was, in a way, a setback to not, you know, I was not getting those offers, or nobody was, nobody even knew who I was back then. 
but i had that belief in myself and i had that faith in myself and i said that this is something that nobody can take away from me and whatever i you know the craft that i'm honing or the work that i'm putting into it nobody can take this away from me this is mine and this is what i can this is what this is what i'm holding on to and this is what i know that's going to get me so i just kept working i just kept working because i said i just want to work whatever it is and you never know which door opens where so whether it's a song whether it's a a short film whether it's a character role whether it's a you know a film on on a ott platform or the biggest successful film um it it takes all of those um opportunities to kind of get you to where you want to go and you just have to start enjoying that journey and the only way i could was by having faith and that's what i feel i feel the few things i've learned in these 10 years is to have the courage to be disliked don't take rejection personally don't seek external validation of course take constructive criticism you need to you know know how to to differentiate between the two but it's for me it's about that internal validation it's about you know you everyone has that voice inside which is telling you you're doing it right you're doing well or you need to step it up you're not doing enough you need to push yourself and you have it in you to do that so i feel you need to listen to your own voices which we often forget because there's so much noise around us we don't know how to cut it off but um that's what faith does i guess when you have faith in yourself you have the ability to remove all those external voices and noises which you know could be a hindrance to get you to where you want to be kiara you are amazing you you have success you have beauty you have brains and you have a great soul thank you so much for coming thank here. you thank my you. pleasure thank you ideas of india ye hai ideas of india abp networks ideas of india